There is nothing like the local church when it's working right. Its beauty is indescribable. Its power is breathtaking. Its potential is unlimited. It comforts the grieving and heals the broken in the context of community. It builds bridges to seekers and offers truth to the confused. It provides resources to those who are in need and opens its arms to the forgotten, the downtrodden and the disillusioned. It breaks the chains of addictions, frees the oppressed and offers belonging to the marginalised of this world. Whatever the capacity for human suffering, the church has a greater capacity for healing and wholeness. Church is us in our weakness and brokenness, forgiving one another, loving one another, serving one another and lifting Jesus up. Still to this day, the potential of the local church is almost more than we can grasp. No other organisation on earth is like the church. Nothing even comes close. To. It might be possible to get to heaven without the church, but what do we miss out on by not being part of one? So in recent weeks, I've been talking about, well, probably not talking, probably banging the drum a bit, <laughs> about the necessity of building the church. And not just, just building it any old how, being a wise builder, not a foolish builder, someone who builds a house on the rock of Christ, not the sand of self. And then last time I, I was talking about not neglecting the work and the power and the move and the vision of the spirit in the rebuilding process. Um, and I was, thinking, I was reflecting that week on Romans 8.14, it says, for all, um, for all who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So all who are led. So we have to be led by the Spirit if we are to be the sons of God. Um, so tonight, I suppose I need to share something new with you. <laughs> but I don't need to, but I feel that God is pushing on something. Um, and I believe this thing is this word identity. Um, in this season, I just really feel there's a real issue about identity, about our identity in Christ being under threat, the church's identity in the world being under threat, and God's identity on the throne. Although it's not under threat, people's perceptions and views of God on the throne. Um, and the reason for this, I really feel, um, is that the enemy is... Well, he's trying to get hold of your passport, your kingdom passport, and he's doing his best to throw it down a drain. So you can't pick it up. You can't get hold of it. You can't even remember what you look like anymore. And you can't even remember where you belong to. And the reason for this is the enemy, he is an identity thief. He wants to dev devalue us as Christians. And not only that, when we look at the church and the state of the church and how we're going to rebuild, he is doing his utmost best to devalue the church with division and disunity. Now, those two things are not um, dissimilar to before COVID, but now on the other side of that, where we're looking to get back into the swing of things and get back, I've, I've heard all sorts of funny conversations and um, yeah, about do they have to go back to church anymore because everyone's watching on social media anymore at, at the moment and things like this. Um, and it's really important that as we move forward, we have a united mind and heart with Christ in this moment. And especially when we go back to our churches, we must we can't be divided. A house divided can't stand. That says that in uh, Mark 3.25. A house divided, it cannot stand. And we as Christians in this day and this time, we are charged with fighting for unity. And it's really important in this season that we just dust ourselves down and remember what we stand for, who we stand for, and why the church exists. Really important questions when we're doing this rebuilding process. Who we stand for, what we stand for, and why the church exists. 
So with that said, I thought about a few questions that might be helpful to you on this ne next leg of your journey, just to ponder, to think over, to pray about. And the first question I have for you is, does your church have a mission statement? Does it have a mission statement? And if it did, did it resemble what you did before the COVID crisis? If your church doesn't have a mission statement, my question with that would be, why not? Because the simple process and, and probability is if you aim for nothing, you're going to hit nothing. And we need to get out of the blocks. When we come out of COVID, we get back at, into church, whatever form that takes, whatever way we're committed and whatever way we decide to move forward, we need to know what we believe we need to know what we're doing and where we're going in the vehicle that we have chosen to get in so <clears throat> but that's the problem if we don't know what we're aiming for we're likely to hit nothing or we're going to be disillusioned about where we're going and not even understand what the destination looks like so we might have got there but we don't even know because we don't even know what the church believes so we really need to get those kind of fundamentals right i really feel um yeah, I just think that that's probably right to leave this. I'll leave those questions with you because there are instances, not all churches fall under this bracket, bearing in mind, but there are instances where we fall into a trap of thinking that um, if we gather, I'll be sensitive here, <laughs> I'll try. If we gather together as Christians, as a group of believers, we have some food and we talk about Jesus, then that is church. Is that your assumption? Because that is not my assumption of church. That, to me, is an exclusive dinner party. Because <laughs> church, to me, when I read the scriptures, when I pray and I speak to Jesus, it is a church and it's a church on a mission. And a church should always, always have a purpose. And the church should always be looking to use and bring in the gifts of the congregation in order to further its efforts to reach the community and then disciple them in those gifts and bring in the harvest. So I've got a piece of advice for you if all of those things are kind of gone over your head or you're a bit confused, I'll ask you another question. Are you happy at your church? If you've got some funny questions and you've got some funny answers that go rattling around in your mind from that, from that, through the, from those statements I've thrown out, I would suggest and I would ask that you would talk to the leaders in love and have a decided mind when you return and have a committed heart. And there's a simple reason for this. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So if you're double-minded about church, your likelihood is you'll be double-minded about lots of things in your life. And this is where the rhythms of your life do this. We need to to have clarity about what we believe, what we're doing, where we're going. And once we've got that clarity and we've got that vision and we've got that heart and mind of one accord, we are able to progress in the vehicle that we have chosen to go to, to get to Jesus in, <laughs> the one way. COVID has thrown up a pile of questions, I know that. But it's time in this season to be the answer and not make an excuse. If you've got questions, get answers and move on and move into what God has for you. Be blessed.